Good evening, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. I am Olivia, and today's webinar is hosted by Tech Bayern. Let us begin the proceedings of this webinar. A brief introduction to Tech Bayern. So, Tech Bayern in e tech industry is the fastest growing training platform in the country. Its offices are in Bhubaneswar, Delhi, Bangalore, and Patna. It is recognized by the government of India and supported by Startup India. Techban offers a new opportunity to enthusiastic students to learn new techniques and make them industry ready. I am happy to welcome our guest and speaker, Ms. Ayusha Sharma. She is SDE at Walmart. She has 27,000 subscribers in YouTube and 84,000 followers in LinkedIn. This webinar is on mastering the art of placement preparation will be fun and full of learning. Now, I will request Ms. Aishi Sharma to take over and proceed with this webinar. Thank you. Sorry for this interruption, ma'am, but you are not audible. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am, you are. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, sorry for that disturbance. Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much, Olivia, for such an awesome introduction. And yeah, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ayushi. So I'll just give a quick introduction about myself again. So I am currently working as a software engineer at Walmart. And uh, apart from working as a software engineer, I do a lot of stuff, and which includes some like I have my own YouTube channel where I make DSA videos. Um, also, I'm like teaching some places like I teach for a few startups and all that. So I'm here to help you guys on any questions you have for placement preparation. You can ask freely and it would be really awesome if you all can, you know, turn on your videos as well, because that would help me in, you know, interacting with you uh, in a better way. And let me know if you're comfortable in Hindi language or any on like hindi or english whichever language you're comfortable in we can speak in that and you can discuss all your queries all your doubts whichever you have freely so uh, any questions guys you can stop me anywhere wherever you have questions so any questions any queries okay so excuse me ma'am i just joined now could you please repeat sure sure Divya. yeah i'll i'll repeat myself okay so, hey, Divya, how are you? Really fine, ma'am. Great, great, awesome. So, uh, Divya, I am currently working as a software engineer, uh, software engineer at Walmart. And uh, I do a lot of stuff other than that because I think that working is one aspect of everyone's life, but to do, but to explore other fields is very important. So I have my YouTube channel. I post content on LinkedIn. And also I teach in few startups, like I mostly teach educational stuff only. I'm also mentor at many places in many startups as well. So yeah, that's like a quick, small introduction about myself. Tell me something about yourself, Divya. Ma'am, need the page with the you from Kit of Computer Science and Electronics Branch. Awesome. Wow. Okay, uh, so which college? I didn't get you uh, on that. Mankit Kalinga, Bhuvneshwar. Oh, awesome. Great, great, great. Awesome. awesome. So, Divya, do you have any questions which you want to ask or we can proceed? Yes, ma'am, please proceed. Awesome. Okay. So, guys, uh, there are two aspects of placement preparation. It totally depends on what you are targeting. So, I will discuss both the, pro you know, both the paths which you can follow so there are two types of i so i'm i'm like i'm taking that everyone is hoping to get a job after their graduation or some have graduated or some are there in college so all everyone is looking like everyone will be looking for jobs so there are two types of jobs which you can look as in like a software engineer in two types of companies one will be service based companies and one will be, one will be product based companies so both have their different placement preparation steps. Okay. First, let's discuss about service-based. So service-based placement preparation is little bit easier than product-based because there is no uh, like difficulty of 
DSA or data structures which are asked in service based interviews is not of that hard level as compared to the uh, like ones asked in the product based companies interviews. So for service based, what is required is you need to have aptitude. You need to have aptitude like you need to learn. You need to have aptitude preparation. You need to do aptitude quantitative, qualitative. Secondly, also you have you should have basic coding knowledge. That is important, like basing algorithms, searching, sorting algorithms. Not very much complex problems they ask in interviews. Basic searching algorithms they ask. So, if I have to talk about interview rounds of service-based companies, it involves first is one online test which will be having uh, aptitude questions, and there might be some MCQs of like uh, technical MCQs like time complexities or your CS subjects like computer networks, DBMS, operating systems, like MCQs, there will be there, uh, those will be there. That will be the first round, like online test. After that, there will be two, two in, uh, interview rounds, which will be involving around the projects you have made in your college and uh, basic, basic technical knowledge they'll be asking, like different SQL queries and all that. So service-based focus on different so basically service based company interviews focuses on your overall you can say uh, knowledge of cs subjects basically that is like if you're targeting service based companies so you should prepare in that way that you should focus more on aptitude and you should have basic coding knowledge that is what you should need to focus on if you are planning for service based why people do not go for service based there is one like basic reason which I am aware of is because of low package, low CTC. But it is not in that way that, okay, if you're going to service based, you will not get a career growth. It's not like that. Definitely not that you will be get, you will be involved in different projects in those companies. Like if I have to name some companies, Infosys, Wipro, Accenture and uh, Capgemini, uh, cognizant these are some of the service based companies and there is obviously there is growth and learnings in these companies so if you are if you are focusing on service based this is the path you should follow so guys any queries any doubts related to this please please don't hesitate you can ask freely if anyone wants to turn on their video they can turn on as well because it would be awesome any questions Related to anything we have discussed till here. Hello, good evening. Yeah, hey, Mihir, what's up? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, I want to confirm, like, from where can we prepare the aptitude for aptitude round? Any good resources to prepare for aptitude round? Sure, sure. I will. Yes, ma'am. Same here. Yeah, yeah. I will do one thing. I'll share my screen and I'll show you from where I have done it. And it was very like geeks for geeks. Basically, the website was geeks for geeks, but I will show you. So is my screen visible? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So see here now, if you write uh, GFG aptitude placement. So this is the link, right? I'll share this in chat as well. So here, if you see now, you will get these questions, quantitative aptitude questions. Okay. And reasoning and all that English and CS subjects also you will get. So basically this link you can see you can say is your service based preparation link here now see learn if you go to learn like for example let's say here if you go to learn you will get different formulas like there is some introduction of the concept and after that there will be some problems which you can solve at the bottom and if you want to practice more so you can go here and go to you can go to practice so here you will get different mcqs you know, like uh, you can practice here. But uh, after doing from here, right, you need to also give different tests because uh, the main thing in these aptitude rounds is the time, time constraint. So you have to have that speed in which you can solve the MCQs also. So uh, there are many, you know, you can search here. There are many online uh, tests available, like timer will start and you have to solve like let's say x amount of mcqs in x amount of y amount of time so that is also very much important i'm i'll share this link in the chat 
so this is very so this was very useful guys this is not like you can say a summary of these concepts and uh, important practice questions as well so one second i'll share in the chat so i hope meer uh, and the uh, it's clear let me know if you have any yes. questions yes thank you thank you yeah yeah no issues hello ma'am yeah hey pritha i'm i'm like i uh, like i'm saying your name correctly right pronouncing your name correctly yes yes ma'am yes ma'am yes. okay yeah, ma'am as you said that basic coding is needed ma'am is this needed for any field of interview like for any stream like yes. commerce science or Oh, yes yes okay. yes so yeah if you are see if you are uh, if you are sitting in placements so they will be expecting that you will have basic coding knowledge it doesn't matter you are coming from electronics branch or you are coming from mechanical branch they will ask basic searching algorithms they will ask searching sorting they will ask uh, uh, these uh, dbms queries and all that so you need to prepare that, those also thank you So guys, this was the pathway for service-based companies. If anyone has any other queries, I am here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Ma'am, from where to get basic knowledge of C N and D B M S, like you said? So D B M S, so one C D B M S, uh, the best two. There are two best websites. You can search. So I'll share again. Uh, share my screen again. One website is Geeks for Geeks, as I uh, told you here. you can see different my screen is visible right yes ma'am yes okay. ma'am yes ma'am yeah okay thanks so see here you can go and practice dbms otherwise if you want to learn either you can go to you can search dbms geek for geeks or there is a very, a very good website w3 schools so dbms w3 schools you can go and here you can uh, like they have uh, all the queries like sql queries insert null update delete so from here you can uh, learn this is very good website so i'll share the link also one other website is java t point here you can like learn other these concepts like dbms so wherever you find language easy and you know you, know, you are able to understand with that you can go uh, with so this is also very good website java t point so basically three three uh, like basically i have followed these three websites only like any one you can follow uh, w3 schools gfg and java t point so apurva uh, is raising hands apurva do you have any uh, queries what should be the uh, what should be the road map for second semester student to achieve these all things hmm so see apurva since you are in second semester right first of semester. all i would suggest hmm. yeah i would suggest uh, first learn a programming language you can go with either c++ java or python any one any of one uh, these one you can learn uh, like we like you can you should have a good knowledge about that language you can easily code in that language and once you are done with that uh, language start learning dsa like that is data structure algorithms okay what i yes. suggest is this uh, aptitude right aptitude preparation you should start like 6 or 7 months before your placements why because if you start it in second year or third year you will ultimately forget till you reach your placement time so uh start preparation of aptitude uh, before like 6 to 7 months before that okay. is sufficient time yeah but but dsa that is data structure algorithms and a 
sound, sound knowledge of a programming language that you should start from the beginning only because more you practice this thing more you will become good in it okay we'll come yes, to dsa I'm, yeah actually i am practicing c++ with dsa now and mm -hmm. my uh, basic abhi my goal is to just uh, get an internship in second year uh, or third year beginning hmm awesome yeah so internship is also very important i, I would suggest have two internships in your entire minimum of two internships in your entire btech so yeah that's great uh, pathway you are uh, going into but yeah as of now you are in correct path and you should learn a programming language that's the first step yeah i am uh, learning uh, c++ with dsa uh, what should i learn after that uh, it will take i think uh, this semester i will learn this only dsa up to okay. uh, but in third semester what should i start uh, if you hmm. can help so see dsa will go on till your last year okay that is something you need to do parallelly because if you if you will stop it right you will forget the concepts mm -hmm. so yeah that is one thing that will go on secondly what you need to do is now you have to since you are doing internship you will learn new technology so you need to start making new projects which will go in your resume so okay. talking about resume you should have at least at least two good projects there could be more than two but minimum of two good projects should be there in your resume okay okay yeah so for example if you are interested more in mobile development right you are interested in like learning flutter or android so you should have good two android projects in your resume and so that the person knows that okay you are great in that domain mm -hmm. all right so once you are once you have like basic good knowledge of dsa you are able to solve problems right easy medium problems then you start working on a project part because after dsa that is the second most important thing in interview okay so i would suggest now as of now focus on your dsa okay once you have to find internships and all that then you start learning some new technology and work on that but as of now you are you are going great and you should focus more on your dsa skills okay thank you yeah hi ma'am yeah hey pa pavan how are you yeah i'm fine like uh, i have done basic question like basic uh, questions in lead code is it enough for cracking uh, service based product companies okay and uh, i have done uh, projects on web development and machine learning awesome yeah that's it yeah that's great great pavan so uh, since you are, since you have good knowledge of web development so now what you should do is now you should apart, like start like make projects in web development do that also but along with that practice your dsa skills medium problems start going uh, solving a lead code medium, medium problems so that would help yeah okay ma'am thank you yeah excuse me ma'am hello yes siddhant you are audible but your voice is very less it's not very much loud um ma'am hello yeah yeah you are audible yes ma'am yes. ma'am uh, i want to know that uh, how can i uh, get internship hmm okay maximum are paid internship is it beneficial paid internship hmm see so siddhant there are three aspects of internships okay okay first one is uh, the companies which come in your college okay they okay. The, if you are if you are targeting that okay some companies will be coming in my college after second year and i have to uh, you know applying those internships so that is like they will be asking you some basic your cs fundamental okay. concepts and they won't you know majorly judge on your technical skills they will ask basic questions and they will see that okay you have some sound knowledge of coding and all that they will select you okay that is one thing but if you there are no com companies coming in your college for internships and you have to apply off campus off campus right then you should be what you will be doing is you will be applying on different websites like internshala linkedin and all that and once and will, it your, be, will it be beneficial internshala from internshala yes yes it will definitely be beneficial yeah it will be defi definitely beneficial okay. but you should be like what generally happens right when you apply for internship and they revert you back they will give you some assignment which you have to do for example if you are uh, applying for front end developer uh, internship like uh, intern role 
so they will give you some assignment which you have to do in a week so a week amount of time like in seven days or four days and something like that so you should have a sound knowledge of that concept right which okay. so that you are able to do assignment and to be honest uh, some amount of stipend uh, like the paid internship is needed right if you go for free one it totally see it totally depends on you if you are okay with free and you need to just learn that is one thing so you can go with it but i would suggest if you are getting some amount also that is more beneficial because you know you get that motivation of working okay and along with learning also okay. obviously but that that means still important. second year we have to uh, build a good resume yes so that is also important divya so see uh, after two i think after second year you have to have one internship right it is generally like that in colleges right no ma'am actually it's in third year in so third year we get in okay uh, okay for you it's okay okay so i think it varies from college to college for my college it was like after four semester you have to have one internship all right so yeah i think resume anyway you have to see internship when you are applying you have to submit your resume like on internshala or any other website so resume you need to build and the technologies you which you uh, which you know you should be mentioning clearly in your resume along with the some previous work which you have done it's not like you can do okay i have done this youtube playlist and i can add that in my resume no you have to work on some project first so that project you can you know like there are different youtube videos youtube playlist of making some projects basic projects you can make but at least you should have some experience which you can mention in resume that i have made this project all this a basic one but i have done some work in this technology so that so that they also know that okay you have some previous knowledge of application building right that is very important hello ma'am yeah hi koshki what's up hello i'm nice ma'am uh, so ma'am actually i wanted to ask that you have been through interviews and also um, according to you what is a good resume like hmm. what should it contain in order to have like if i am presenting myself in front of the interviewees hmm. so what should be in our resume so that they feel like okay i should hire this person okay yeah nice question so first of all totally depends on the prof profile for example if i if they are looking for a front end developer right and i have mentioned that front those front end skills which they are looking in my resume that would stand out okay so for example if they are looking for a react developer and i have react experience i have some projects which i have made in react so that would stand out secondly your resume should have numbers for example if you are uh, If you, let's let's not not take a, pro, a specific profile. Let's take a software engineer profile you are applying to. Okay, as a fresher, okay. you will do that only. So you should have some numbers that okay, I have participated in these contests. I have got uh, I have got this appreciation, or I have so so that they also know that okay, you have done some work. You have some uh, like you can share your coding profiles like coding. Uh, websites profiles anywhere lead code uh, geeks for geeks hacker rank hacker earth wherever you code you should have those okay, numbers in your resume so that okay if the interviewer is seeing your resume they also know that okay they have done some coding it's not like you just write data structure algorithm and they will uh, uh, okay they will agree that you have knowledge they won't do that like like they need some numbers okay so you should okay. have that in your resume in achievements or any yeah so that is very important projects also very important okay you have listed projects and you have the description of project is very important what you have written that okay how you have worked did you work in a group or you worked on that project single handedly or you have worked in a group so that is also very important which you have to mention so you can write like uh, this project i have worked in a team where i was handling the database part or back end front end all that okay ma'am thank you ma'am yeah no issues so uh, guys any more queries so this was for service based uh, how to prepare for the service based mostly a uh, difference between service and product based interviews is the aptitude part which service based ask more so that is one thing additionally which you have to do now if you have so priyanshu is asking for learning a coding language like c++ java or python 
कैन यू सजेस्ट इन ए पर्टिकुलर वेबसाइट और कोर्स और यूट्यूब चैनल ओके सो एज फार एज आई रिमेंबर पाइथन देर वॉज वेरी गुड पाइथन प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ टेलीस्कोप यूट्यूब चैनल लेट मी डू वन थिंग आई शो यू सी प्लस प्लस देर वॉज अ बुक विच आई रेफर्ड फॉर सी प्लस प्लस बट यू कैन रेफर एनी ऑनलाइन सोर्स ऑल्सो आई एम नॉट राइट नाउ एबल टू रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ द बुक बट आई कैन टेल यू पाइथन प्ले लिस्ट जावा uh was uh, again from the college because we have a subject in college java that i learned from there but mostly i in my interviews code in python so uh, i'll show you that playlist let me do one thing just i'll open the playlist and share my screen that uh, telescope python playlist was very awesome you can check that out so yeah this was a playlist guys um like there are uh, like a lot of videos in this playlist but it's not necessarily you have to go through all just go through basic python concepts uh, like uh, loops functions right that is enough for learning python so basically majorly like i myself code in python for interviews but i know c++ also in java because the c++ in java were, were both in college curriculum python was not so additionally i uh, learned python because how i learned python was because in my first year after my first year i had done six weeks training uh, for this what you say ml so for that they like uh, data science ml uh, so for and then how much time it will take you that i have learned python hey pavan how are you Uh, for see, uh, for like, see, Python is very easy. Like literally easy. It is easier than C plus plus. C plus plus is also easy, but Python is very simple. So it would take hardly two to three days to learn Python. That's it. It's also very easy and uh, you know, interesting. So it won't take much time. The right. whole playlist, uh, uh, two to three days, we can learn it. See, it totally. See, it totally depends on how much you know. It depends on person to person. I cannot like tell you exact time, but for me as personally i have got few like basic understanding of python in 2 to 3 days it totally depends on you how much hours you dedicate or how much you know you are going through the playlist and grasping it so it it, it can vary from person to person oh ma yes meher oh ma could you suggest any uh, any youtube channel for dsa yes for dsa preparation sure sure for dsa there are many good youtube channels i will name so i'll come to that part i'll name some youtube channels uh, for example there is one awesome channel which is tech dose there is one awesome channel which is take you forward and there are many like programming knowledge uh, there is a very good channel also there is one channel if you are a uh, beginner knowledge i'll i'll just i'm writing the names in the chat box there is a very good channel for starting which is my code school um my code school and there is one more channel which is uh, the, the, the code bix bix do take you for one for my knowledge center so these were some youtube channels which i have followed when i was learning and there it i have there is my youtube channel also but i would suggest once you have basic understanding of dsa right all the concepts then only you can hop on to my channel because i make lead code problem videos so that you will only get if you are you have basic knowledge of basic concepts so these are some youtube channels which you can follow and rest yeah these were some of the youtube channels which i followed myself uh for c++ ghansham for c++ ci i have no uh, not much idea of c++ because i have learned c++ via book like from a book only 
so but there are many uh, you can check this website you can learn from gfg best see if you are able geeks for geeks is one stop platform so geeks for geeks you can refer anything so c++ you can learn from there ma'am what after doing python to do to proceed in ml so python once you are you have basic knowledge of python right there is something called the data analytics like there are different python li libraries like sklearn uh, uh that matplotlib and all that so data analysis you can start with uh data analysis and then after that you can jump on to ml and then deep learning nlp all that if you interested in this like this domain Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, the bill. Ma'am, can we directly start NumPy from Python? NumPy, see Python directly for machine learning for ML. Um. Yes, ma'am. See, ma I would Python suggest go step by step. Uh, you can start uh, that also. It doesn't like it won't affect it much, but I would suggest go uh step by step analysis data analysis. numpy matplotlib so they are related only numpy pandas matplotlib and all that after that you can jump jump to ml but that only if you are interested in this domain because once you you know like you are so if you are learning deep learning ml and all that so you should you should uh, invest your four years in that you should you can invest if you if you are interested mostly in that domain No, actually, I want to go for AI. So, hmm. can I start with uh, di directly? Can I directly start with NumPy? Actually, I know basic about Python, so hmm. that's why I'm asking. So, can I jump to NumPy? Yes, then you can jump. Like, if you have basic <laughs> Python knowledge, you can jump. Thank you. Yeah. So, is it is it sufficient for AI to learn NumPy, Pandas, SciPy, or libraries? See, AI is also in. in artificial intelligence also there are lot of aspects i have i have major i have major i have majorly worked on ml i don't have much knowledge of deep learning i have done one to two projects but not very much vast in that so ml that is sufficient numpy but uh, if you want to go to deep learning so there are more complex algorithms in that but firstly you should be good in ml you should have basic knowledge of ml okay ma'am thank you ma'am yes ma'am from where i can get help for projects hmm. or idea about projects see siddhar i would give you this uh, this is the truth right like in pro in your resume your project should not be like it's not necessarily your project should be out of the world ideas and all that you can have a basic you can follow youtube playlist where they are making a basic e-commerce website that is sufficient as a project okay. but okay. but the thing is you should do it on your own when okay. when you make yourself right you learn a lot of things so it's not like if you have a e-commerce website but that website should not entirely be front end please it should not be a front end it should be front end back end and it should have a database okay. it should be a whole full stack project then it's good in your resume okay. but if it's just basic html css and javascript that is not sufficient okay ma'am so for projects you can basically follow any youtube playlist where they have made a good project and that you can follow and you can put it in your resume if you are not if you have not worked in an internship and you have not you know worked on a real time project then you can put it okay how oh, to find yes i'm not giving suggest any good dsa projects dsa projects uh, see basically data uh, dsa when you say dsa in your basic website also you will be learning uh, you will be use, using arrays hash maps all that but uh like school management or college management projects these kind of projects library management you can use for the like if you want to include dsa but these are very basic very basic ones if you in your like if you make a mobile app also na you will be you will be using queues in that for example if you are making a list of patients like patients who came first who came last queue you will be using maps you will be using arrays you will be using so If you make a basic e-commerce website project, also that is also involving DSA concepts only. So, ma'am, is it ma'am is it fine to solve four hundred to five hundred DSA questions on LeetCode 
or need more questions to be done to no, crack a product base no see please. interviewer doesn't interviewer doesn't it doesn't matter to interview how many questions you have solved right you should have that knowledge of concepts if you if you if you are solving 500 easy problems it won't make any good for you because you are just solving easy right you should solve you should solve medium problems and easy problems but the concepts should be you should cover all the concepts okay yeah. so it yeah. count doesn't matter interviewer will not ask how many questions you have solved in lead code they won't ask this thing okay yeah. Yeah. it's just that you should have that clear understanding of concepts okay and uh, like if i was interested in uh, web development and python i need to learn complete from full stack i mean from starting to ending i have to have the entire idea or just a uh, is it just uh, enough uh, having the idea about front end so for full stack right see for full stack three things are required for full stack right yeah yeah so see for full stack there are two ways mon stack or mean stack okay mon will have react node js react in the front end node js in the back end okay mean is uh, angular in the front end and uh, again uh, this your node js in the back end so you can go to either first you should know uh, html css javascript that is the basic after that you can learn some front end frame framework like react or angular any choose anyone you can choose i would suggest react go with react because the industry more people are using react then node js which is basic javascript and node js is a framework just a back end framework so that is also the, basically these three things are required html css javascript react and node that is that is it for full stack so you can follow yeah. that part yeah so abhi ji abhi neet is asking how to find company related to particular suppose a coder i studied django and for the database and i'm using to back end so how can find those companies are recruited in django developer so abhi need for that right uh, basically you can either search on linkedin there are different on linkedin or for that you need to be active on internshala or nokri wherever see you will have to anyway specifically they will be not like saying django developer they will be saying back uh, like back end developer so back end also they sh you should see in the job description what technology they are you know they have written there so that is how you have you just need to check on different websites that is the only thing what would be the importance of certificates and resumes for both service and no so hey certificates doesn't matter it won't help in any case you can just simply write certified in this this but the interviewer doesn't pay that much attention on the certification word so they will I, as i said they will go on numbers they will see they will not be like checking out okay you got certificate in this uh, you just need to have that those numbers or those projects which will show them that okay you have worked on that so ratan is asking communication skills like english is required or i can interview so ratan it totally depends on your interviewer mostly in my case in, in, in uh, uh, like all the interviews i have been to english is important you should communicate in english uh, you know in like in midway if you feeling like okay you can use some hindi but english is the majorly language which you which is used in interview so you should have those communication skills as well hello yes funky sam yes, yes a good evening uh, could you tell a bit about what exactly hackathons are and how are they beneficial yeah nice question so see hackathons pay a very good aspect on your resume if you have hackathons listed in your resume it would give a, a great impact on the interviewer otherwise hackathons will you know help you collaborate with the team if you are working in a team you will learn okay that how to interact with team and how to divide work okay how to work on a different aspect of a project if project is a whole like it's a 100% you will be giving your 20% on what aspect on what part of the project so it's very important as a collaborative work to do so hackathons majorly work on that part that you will learn how to interact with the team and how to work in a group 
and again it will um, be a great uh, you know listing in your resume okay so the skills that we acquire in a dsa and like web development we get to apply that only yes yes see hackathons are different types of hackathons one hackathon is that you have to make a good project in 48 hours like that hackathons some other hackathons are there like where your yeah sorry guys for that actually i have some network issues uh, i'm audible right yes yes, yes you are yes thanks devi okay so yeah um i'll i'll just turn off my video i have some network issues my side my side okay so yeah where we were we were talking about hackathons so yeah any other queries guys ma'am when you said that project based hackathons and the second one please yeah so see different types of hackathons i have been to two types of hackathons one is like where you have some x amount of hours that 24 hours you have to make this project and this basically it should be centered on something related to this technology or this initiative something like that secondly there is some conceptual like uh, technology related hackathons where you have uh, a group of like you have a team and where you have to answer certain amount of questions which they give you so it totally it 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 different types of hackathons are there and they surely put a great uh, impact in your resume if they are listed i'm same goes for gsoc or not yes gsoc is very good opportunity both learning and personal growth wise because see uh, gsoc you will be collaborating with teams which are outside of india okay virtually also but you will have that opportunity so you should definitely try for gsoc uh, in whatever technology which uh, like in so in different year, uh, different years they have different technologies which are there in gsoc so whichever you are comfortable in you can apply for that so what if i am just a beginner can i apply for gsoc as well as hackathons so what happens na divya in gsoc na you have to work with a startup which they have which th which is listed in gsoc so it totally yeah. depends on what uh, what uh, your uh, performance they have given to you know gsoc people and all that so this is you should have that knowledge and skill set to be able to work in that startup okay and in that technology so obviously you, if you are beginner and you don't have see if i if i'm uh, if i'm uh, going for a react uh, like a react profile in gsoc and i don't have any knowledge of react that won't work i have to know something about react first and i should have no, some prior knowledge okay. yeah i would suggest go through a video of how to apply a uh, how to apply in gsoc and how to work once you have you know got that uh, acceptance from gsoc so they have different domains in gsoc for different languages over yes yes they have different yeah yeah they have different like Fl flutter uh, react and all that different different uh, startups which are there which are doing different technologies they have everything so you have there is a website where you can see which are which all technologies are uh, there and you can apply in that chat okay thank you yeah uh, ma'am can you please move to the product based company preparation sure me yeah i'll get to that so for product based there are three things which are very important majorly we have discussed only i have shared the youtube uh, i am not sure uh, the chat is visible to you guys the previous chat i think it would be visible only but uh, yeah i have shared the youtube channels from where you can do the preparation uh, first of all very important is data structure algorithms so once you are comfortable with any language like c++ java or python any one of these not all not at all only one you have to do dsa so that is most important thing it's important than projects important than anything okay so data structures because data structures only will clear your online test it will clear your interview the projects discussion will come in the third round for the first three rounds online assessment and two interview rounds which will be on dsa so data structure algorithms you should have a good sound knowledge which will go through a second third year you have to do parallelly dsa problems and you have to do consistently once you stop right you will forget the concepts you will forget the syntax you will forget the concepts so you should be consistent in doing dsa 
all your three years or four whatever okay that is one thing second thing which comes are the projects so we have had a discussion on projects to minimum two projects you should have in your resume that good good when i say good it doesn't mean it should be out of world idea or some different idea no it should be a project where you have involved all the basic basic uh, you know like uh, parts of a project like front end also is there back end is there and a database connectivity so that is like a full stack project or if you are uh, you, if you are have a machine learning project and all that it should have good gate it should have good uh, accuracy percentage it should not be like some uh, data analysis you have done some ml algorithm you have uh, you have created and uh, it has not much great accuracy it's just 60% so no that is of no use 60% accuracy is very bad right so you should have at least two good projects in your resume thirdly comes your resume again so these three things are very important resume and the cs subjects cs subjects when i say cs subjects it means computer networks you will learn if you are currently in your first year you you will learn these con these subjects in your second and third year which are computer networks operating systems dbms and oops oops so i will just write these computer uh, these subject names in the chat computer networks operating system dbms and uh, oops so majorly what additional thing you should have you should do in your four years is you should be good in dsa that is major thing which you have to do secondly you should make two minimum two good projects resume you should be start you should start building your resume after your first year because you should because second year third year you have to go to for internships and all so you should make your resume update it regularly when you whenever you do a new thing update it and lastly uh, the cons these subjects you will learn in your curriculum only so that is not an additional thing which you need to do aptitude you need to do if you are uh, targeting for service based okay so uh, so in, in a nutshell guys for product based dsa two minimum two projects and resume and cs subjects which i have listed like computer network operating system dbms and oops these four things are required for any product based companies and then there comes a like company to company specific aspect for example i'll give an example flipkart if you are applying in flipkart they would have a round of system design low level there is something called as low level system design for freshers for freshers they do not ask system design generally but in flipkart there is one round which is system design low level system design so if you are targeting flipkart you should have a good knowledge of uh, low level system design then another company uh, different uh, is goldman sachs if you are targeting goldman sachs then you should know aptitude because they are have aptitude in their online round other than this there might be some other exceptions but generally there is only dsa in the online round which is important so yeah so guys any more queries we are over time so i'll take few more questions and then we can wrap up the session oh uh -huh. So oh, ma'am, yes, Mir. Oh, ma'am, actually, our college schedule is very hectic uh, these days because I'm currently in third year. Also, yeah. ma'am, when we do not get much time to practice DSA because we're constantly busy with some assignments or mm. or mm. exams. Also, ma'am, like also, I want to confirm like what are the like are the minimum the the websites we should do for for good DSA preparation to get in a good product based company. So see, no. it's not like you have to do an x amount of coding websites no not at all you should only pick one website if you are good in if you see questions are same on all websites whether you go to lead code you go to geek for geeks you go to interview bit you go to hacker and questions are same it's just that you need to come to website so you can code on lead code also it doesn't matter it's not like you have to go to all and code no 
ओके तो ंग uh with you guys if you have any queries you can message me there i am open to all of your doubts uh thank you very much ma'am really for giving us a wonderful idea about placements and sharing your experience with us and also make this a productive one and definitely it was a wonderful like awesome one to one interactive session so this is so much helpful yeah. for all yeah thanks olivia thank you so much Yeah so yeah just uh, i hope this was helpful guys and hit me up if you have any doubts uh, you can message me on linkedin i've shared my uh linkedin link in the chat yeah that's it